From the top of Lock 39, one can see right down to Lake Simcoe, but there's still two locks ahead to clear before reaching that point. If you haven't had a chance to stop for a break yet, Lock 40, Thor Lock, pictured here, is another quiet, out of the way spot that you could stop for lunch or even overnight. The final lock to pass through before reaching Lake Simcoe is Lock 41, Gamebridge. With its proximity to the busy Highway 12 overpass and the accompanying road noise, it's not recommended for overnighting. Just ahead of the railway bridge, keep an eye out for the shoal that extends quite a ways out in the channel where it rejoins the Talbot River. There's one final swing bridge before reaching Lake Simcoe. This is also your last chance to stop before heading out onto the open lake. Before venturing out, it is highly recommended that you check weather conditions beforehand. This lake has a well-earned reputation of turning nasty fast when winds pick up, so exercise caution before proceeding. Along with following marine weather reports on your VHF radio, you can also get updates from the lock staff. They tend to ask boaters who have just come off the lake what conditions are like, and they're happy to pass on any information they may have. After the confines of the Trent Canal, the clear and open waters of Lake Simcoe just might inspire many to spread their wings and set sail, even if they don't have any. Keep an eye out for the green buoy marking Trout Shoal off Strawberry Island as you approach the top end of the lake. With Strawberry Island in our wake, we can now spot the final fairway marker leading into the Atherley Narrows. With no less than eight marinas located here, weekend boat traffic through the Atherley Narrows can sometimes rival that of a big city rush hour. The plus side being that passing boaters can be accommodated for both fuel and pump out services at two of those marinas, with the first one being Blue Beacon Marina, located just before the bridge, on the east side. Neither of the two marinas located just north of the Highway 12 bridge offer any services or transient facilities. Approaching the railway swing bridge, you may notice that the northbound current picks up speed here quite a bit, especially after a rain, so adjust your driving accordingly. As well, keep an eye out for the submerged piles on your port hand side. The Mariposa Landing Marina on your port side offers transient slips for boats up to 55 feet. Bridgeport Marina has an easy access fuel dock that sells both gasoline and diesel, as well as offers a pump out service. They also welcome overnight boaters. Clear of the Atherley Narrows, the small craft route continues northward, but some may elect to turn west here at Heron Island to visit the very popular Port of Aurelia. Known as the Jewel of the Trent, the Port of Aurelia Marina boasts over 200 slips, all of which are fully serviced with both shore power and fresh water connections. Located on the threshold of Aurelia, this popular destination is within steps of liquor and grocery stores, as well as numerous restaurants and specialty shops. Each summer, both the town and the port play host to popular events such as street festivals, a Christmas and June celebration, and the always crowd-pleasing car show, held each August. After a great time at the Port of Aurelia, we return to the small craft route and continue northward across Lake Kuchiching. Right around mile 205, you'll enter a section known locally as the Bowling Alley. 
This is in reference to the arrow straight set of boys marking a safe passage to the Severn River through the lake's very shallow and very rocky north end. From here, the next six miles will be a slow but pleasant ride to Sparrow Lake. Just after entering the channel, you'll pass by McGregor on the Water Marina on your port side. The recently upgraded fuel dock now offers both diesel and ethanol free gasoline. Between the Provincial Highway 11 bridge and Lock 42, the land on both sides of the canal is part of the Nature Conservancy and remains undeveloped. Just upstream of the lock is a railway swing bridge that can see frequent traffic, so if your boat requires more than 12 feet of clearance, you may experience delays. Remember that train traffic gets priority here, so if you hear that train a coming, you may have to wait. Around the corner is the top side of Lock 42, Kuchiching Lock. If you're planning to stop here for any length of time, head to the starboard side tie-up wall. This used to be the blue line for boats locking through, but that's since been relocated to the opposite side of the channel. With so many folks heading to and from Georgian Bay through here, Lock 42 consistently sees some of the highest traffic numbers on the system. At the peak of summer, the staff here will see in excess of 100 boats a day. For those who want to overnight here, there's plenty of room at both the top and bottom side of the lock. When things shut down for the day, you might just find this to be the most peaceful place on the water. And the only problem you'll have is that you just might find yourself never wanting to leave. Leaving the bottom of Lock 42, the small craft route continues west and north past the homes and cottages along the Severn River as we carry on towards Sparrow Lake. Right at the entrance to the lake is Lauderdale Point Marina. Their fuel dock sells both gas and diesel as well as offers a pump out. Just watch out for the shoal on your starboard side as you head in. The less than two miles of open water make crossing Sparrow Lake a quick affair. The top of the lake leads us into a relatively short and well-marked channel that slowly winds its way past a few small islands as well as some grassy areas. Rounding the top of McLean Bay returns us to the Severn River whose shoreline now reveals a much more rugged and untamed landscape. The first narrow passage you'll encounter along this stretch is here at the Sparrow Lake Chute, which is followed just a little bit more than a mile downstream at the very pretty McDonald Cut. As would be expected, these are both speed restricted zones, but given the fact that most of the shoreline is solid rock, any wake that's created is simply going to bounce offshore and back into the channel. So it's both a good practice as well as common courtesy to both your fellow boaters as well as property owners to be mindful of your wake. At some of the narrow spots along the river, like here at Hydro Glen, you may experience sudden and very strong currents and turbulent waters, especially after days of heavy rain, so be prepared. Clear of Hydro Glen, the Severn widens out again and becomes quite serene for the next mile and a half run up to Lock 43 at Swift Rapids. 
From the top of Swift Rapids, it's not readily apparent that this lock has the highest lift of any conventional lock on the system. Not only that, but it's the only one with floating bollards that boaters can tie to as these will rise and fall with the water levels. Reaching the bottom, the giant castle-like doors open up, revealing the true magnitude of this structure. Right alongside is the Swift Rapids Generating Station. Completed in 1917, this power plant's turbines are able to harness the energy of the Severn River, converting it into over 43,000 megawatts of renewable hydroelectricity every year. Overnight docking is available both at the bottom and here at the top side of the lock. This is also where the public washrooms are located. At 47 feet, Swift Rapids is nearly twice as high as any other conventional lock on the system. One can get a sense of just how high that is by looking west out over the water from the control tower. And besides that, it's a pretty nice view. But then again, on a night like this, the view is spectacular pretty much everywhere. From here, it's eight and a half miles to the next lock at the Big Chute, and there's plenty to see, including lots more beautiful scenery along the way. Just minutes after leaving Swift Rapids, you'll arrive at the Wabak Restaurant. They have overnight docking with shore power, and it's a real favorite in the area. And with some of the best home cooking on the river, reservations are probably a good idea. Just around the corner from the Wabak is Flat Rock Rapids and another place where the current is going to keep you on your toes. With rocks lurking just below the surface on either side, this can feel like a pretty tight corner, especially if you're following a strong current. So watch out for oncoming traffic, keep both hands on the wheel, and approach with caution. If you're not in a big hurry to reach the big chute or need some last minute supplies, you can always pull into the government dock at Severn Falls. Here you'll find a restaurant with cottage rentals, a fuel dock, as well as a general store that provides both beer and liquor sales. Next up, get ready for one of the most unique boating experiences both on and off the water as we prepare to take a ride on the Big Chute Marine Railway. The Big Chute is a lock in name only, as boaters here don't pass through a conventional lock, but rather are carried overland by way of a marine railway, the only one of its kind in North America. With the carriage partially submerged, boaters are individually called upon to enter in an order that makes the most efficient use of the space as determined by the lock staff. With the boats all secure, the carriage now rises up and out of the water following 600 feet of track as it descends 57 feet down into Gloucester Pool. Reaching the bottom of the incline, the carriage partially submerges once again, allowing all the boats to reflow.
Once given the all clear by the staff, the boats simply start up and drive out. Just after the big chute, the next predominant feature is the narrow channel at Little Chute. As we saw in some of the earlier narrow passages, there's generally always a strong downbound current running here that boaters have to contend with. With that in mind, keep both an eye and ear out for any upbound traffic, as only the smallest of boats should ever attempt to pass one another through here. The little chute empties onto a fairly large body of water known as Gloucester Pool. For the final three miles into Port Severn at Lock 45, the small craft route will wind its way past a number of small and pretty islands both here on the pool as well as Little Lake beyond. Constructed during the economic and political pressures of the day, Lock 45 remains the smallest lock on the system. At only 84 feet in length, it also determines the maximum size of boat that can navigate the entire waterway. Overnight docking, which is limited to two nights here, is available on the floating docks as well as the concrete wharf behind the blue line. For those who prefer a marina experience, there's Starport Marina, just east of the lock. Hailing themselves as a luxury resort type facility, they have a full service fuel dock, restaurant, on-site laundry, and much more. The Driftwood Cove Marine Resort is accessible by way of a privately buoyed channel that lies just off the small craft route, right around the corner from the lock. A rec center, general store, and their own private sandy beach are just a few of the amenities they have to offer. Located at the threshold of Georgian Bay, Driftwood Cove has 100 slips, catering to cruising boaters who are passing through or those looking for a more permanent home. Just west of the lock is the Inn at Christie's Mill. Known more for their on-site accommodations, dining and spa facilities, they also have limited docking available. With minimal services for boaters and low docks, overnighting is not recommended. East of the lock sits Bush's Marina, offering transient slips for boats up to 45 feet. One of their best features is the Dam Grill Restaurant, where you can enjoy your waterside meal while watching the boats go by. A little farther east sits the Raleigh Resort. This highly rated hotel and restaurant also offers top-notch docking facilities to transient boaters, who have access to all of the Raleigh's amenities including a pool and spa. And with a setting like this, it's the perfect spot to take in another gorgeous sunset over the water as you reflect upon your 240 mile journey along Ontario's beautiful Trans Severn Waterway. Thanks for joining us. It's been a lot of fun.